Hi, my name is Paul Browning and I just wanted to welcome you to the Taster course for Computer Network Engineers. Just a little bit about myself before we get started. I worked as a police officer in the UK for 12 years, a yeah, very difficult job and as you can imagine working shifts and dealing with violent offenders 24-7 can eventually have a, quite a wearing effect but I did have an interest in IT and I managed to get a couple of courses inside the police helping support their IT systems in particular email. I studied really hard and passed a CompTIA Network Plus PC Engineers course and that enabled me to get out of the police and make a career change. I spent some time working on a help desk which isn't the most glorious job in the world but when you're first trying to get into IT it's a great way to get some experience. I did some network support for a company called Yellow Pages uh, which I believe is international so you may well have heard, ab heard about them. It was basically doing desktop support helping people with their emails and other desktop applications so there wasn't really much networking involved but it allowed me to get some experience and also in all of my spare time I did lots and lots of studying and I passed some Cisco exams basic in advance and I also passed some Microsoft exams for server support at the time it was Windows NT. I eventually got a job with Cisco Systems and I was doing network support for Cisco. There was no training involved, but I basically taught myself a lot of stuff and I ended up writing in my spare time a best-selling Cisco study guide called Cisco CCNA Simplified. It's not for sale anymore. I've upgraded it to another Cisco study guide called Cisco CCNA in 60 days. So that's how I got started in my IT career. I eventually left Cisco Systems. We are all made redundant, actually, and I started teaching uh, computer networking courses on weekends in the UK and I also did consulting, network consulting in my spare time. I built that business over a few years and eventually I sold it to a colleague of mine, had a little bit of time off because uh, we had uh, my wife and I had our first child and then I moved into online training. The site I actually started with was how, called howtonetwork.net which basically just did Cisco training and now I've completely revamped the site and it's called howtonetwork.com and that basically covers uh, at the moment about 20 different IT certification exams, career advice and a whole bunch of other courses. So I've put together uh, some taster courses for you to give you a sample of the kind of certifications that are out there and also for you to have a risk-free way just to have a look and feel of the different types of courses and maybe get an idea for the kind of thing that you would enjoy doing because it's really important that you choose a career path that you enjoy otherwise you're going to be quite miserable and uh, probably bored. So you've got a lot of career choices as a network engineer, computer engineer, network engineer, whichever path you choose to take and it can get quite confusing. You've obviously got a whole bunch of different vendors. When I first started there was really only a handful to choose from and some of those have gone burst. There's no such thing as voice networking and security was at a very rudimental level and even ser server support software, server software was in its infancy and now you've got a whole bunch of vendors that are in competition and uh, large uh, smaller companies have splintered off from Cisco for example and formed other companies to go into competition and they all specialize in various things and do things better or worse than other other companies so you've got a whole bunch of vendors to choose from and obviously you've got different career paths as well should you specialize and if you're going to specialize should you do it early or later on how or what sort of foundation should you build um, and do you want to be technical or non-technical so, you know, I can't answer all these questions for you, but I can certainly hopefully give you some useful information. So pathways to take. Obviously, you've got hands on configuration where you, you get given a, a diagram normally by a designer and you have to install servers, Cisco routers, or perhaps you could just do cabling. Personally, you could find that a little bit boring, I think, just doing cabling all day long. Um, and you could do a basic uh, configuration once the devices are installed. A lot of the time people start off doing basic installation of hardware. Then you do a very limited amount of configuration and then a remote engineer normally does the main configuration. So a good way to start in the, the IT field. 
If you find it very interesting, you could become a voice engineer, which is a, a high demand career and certainly a specialization. Security, obviously a red hot topic for every single user, even home users up to small businesses and large businesses always requires uh, security engineers. You could be a core network engineer dealing with VLANs, trunking and routing protocols and obviously upgrades and support. And within all of these careers, you've obviously got a command line interface. Different vendors will only really use command line such as, uh, such as Unix, or you could be the type of engineer that would prefer the, it's called the GUI, the graphical user interface. And Windows predominantly, although you do have some command line, is a graphical system. And if you prefer one over the other, then that's obviously going to influence your career choice. And then obviously you've got the person who doesn't do any hands-on whatsoever and it's normally referred to as a network designer or a network architect and that's a whole other career path. Uh, I, won't, I won't have time to go into that at the moment but um, as I add more courses on tohowtonetwork.com I'll add taster modules to this course here so do please keep checking back. Right this is my personal recommendation and this is the path I took which helped me make my career change, but also it gives you just a fantastic foundation in lots of different technologies. And now a few years ago, I would have said, do the A+, do the Network+, plus, but it isn't going to really get you any you know, career progression. Now that's changed because government policy, certainly in the USA and UK, and I'm sure many other countries, requires you to pass these exams in order to do your job. You're not allowed to touch any network equipment. You can't be interviewed for a job. Um, and if you already have the job, you can't keep your job until you pass these exams. Uh, so that is one really good reason to take them. But also it will just give you a fantastic exposure to core networking and server and PC concepts, device drivers, TCP IP, IP addressing, basic design, and obviously a lot of security concepts as well. And they're all very marketable and widely accepted certifications. After you've completed that, you will have a good idea where you want to go with your career. Like I said earlier, you could go the core routing and switching route in your career. And you've obviously got two big vendors. Cisco is probably the biggest. Juniper is a very big vendor. And they have a career path that takes you from junior engineer all the way up to intermediate and senior engineer. And obviously, they've got their own security and voice and, and uh, enterprise paths as well. If you prefer server support, which more focuses is less on the network side of things and more on the server side of things, so providing services to users and also obviously web servers, email server software, that kind of thing. You've got Linux, Red Hat and Microsoft and they all have their career paths as well. They recognize the value of certification and you can check all of these websites for their career uh, paths. Just as an example, if you really fancy becoming a security engineer and you wanted to be a hands-on to the configuration then three three vendors here for example Cisco, Juniper and Red Hat all have specific paths. Cisco and Juniper as I said generally deal with core routing and switching whereas Red Hat is your server software and each of them requires you to take a basic exam which I've listed first and then you've got the intermediate so the basic exam has got nothing to do with security as such. It does cover some of the core core topics, but doesn't specialize. And then Cisco, I've got CCNA security. The Juniper's got the JNCIS and Red Hat. You need to become the Red Hat server engineer before you can specialize. So these are three of the vendors with their paths to become a security engineer. Now, obviously, if you're more concerned about security policy and less about hands-on configuration again that's a whole other career path an example is the CIWSP which uh, the engineer here isn't hands-on generally they decide on the security policies so back to the course I've put these sample courses together and generally each career path it builds on foundations and then goes into various vendors it just gives you a three sample lectures from all these different courses some of them are quite basic and some of them go into core, hardcore subjects. I don't expect you to actually pass any exams after looking at these lectures, but I do expect you to just get a good flavour and a taste of the technologies. And if you find it really interesting, then that's a good hint that that could be a career path that is um, something you'd enjoy doing. 
So I hope you've enjoyed uh, listening to my introduction. I hope you enjoy the courses. Post a question if um, you have anything and I'll do my best to help. And please uh, give me a, 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 good, a good review if you enjoy it. So this is Paul Browning from howtonetwork.com signing off.